cookbook. I work for the controller's office. I am here with my boss, Ed Sokolowski, who is the director of app application development at the controller's office. And um, I just want to give you a little bit of background on, on NYCHA and Checkbook before we dive in. Um, this started around 2015. We became we started talks with NYCHA to present their data to in, in Checkbook because a lot of people were asking about where the money goes within NYCHA. And we wanted to set up that level of transparency uh, for NYCHA as well. And so once we got an agreement between the controller's office and NYCHA, we had a, um, we hired someone to go work at NYCHA and figure out what data points we wanted to draw into checkbook and create an ETL process, an overnight pro batch process where we bring in their data um, every day on a 24 hour basis. We're about a day and a half behind. Likewise, we are a day and a half behind in our data with FISA. But this is up-to-date information coming directly from FISA's, FISA's financial system. Um, unlike uh, FMS, which is the New York City's financial management system, uh, they have a different financial system. So the terms are a little different. The way we present the information is a little different. So um, if you have been to prior checkbook sessions, this one is going to be a little bit different than the past ones. Like the other sessions, for those of you who have never been in checkbook, we're going to do an overview of what kind of information is in checkbook, how you click through it, how you get information from it, and then we will go over some specific examples so that you understand how to look at the data that you get out of the NYCHA section of checkbook. And, so, just, and yeah. just to add to that, um, any questions you have, please post it in the chat and I will monitor the chat while Nicole's doing her presentation. Thank you. Great. Um, so when you come to the checkbook site, you'll be brought to the citywide area um, under the spending app. So to get to the NYCHA data, we're going to come up here to other government agencies. We have a drop down. I'm going to choose NYCHA. And then the page refreshes. All the information now is just NYCHA. But just a note, if you hit the home button, you're going to be taken to the citywide area again. So only use the home button in citywide. If you are in the housing authority, you want to use your breadcrumbs to get back. Uh, so we show budget data, revenue data, spending, contracts, and payroll data within checkbook. Uh, when you are taken to the NYCHA area, you are immediately brought to the spending side. You know you're in spending because the box is blue, and um, it will show you all of NYCHA spending up to this date, which is $1.2 billion. NYCHA's um, fiscal year is a little different than citywide. Their fiscal year is from December to December, from December to January. So it's like a regular, a regular calendar year. Um, we're going to come on down. We have these graph representations. If you hover over the graph, you can see the data. So we do spending, total spending across years in NYCHA. Then we do a year-to-year -year comparison. Then we do our top 10 vendors by disbursement amount. And we show the top contracts that NYCHA holds by disbursement amount. If you want to see the underlying data, you can click on grid view and it'll show it to you here, and you can export the data into a CSV or Excel file. So we're just gonna come on down. The spending is then broken out into payroll spending, contract spending, Section 8 spending, and other spending. If I were to click on I, any one of these boxes, then the page would refresh for all of just, like if I just wanna see contract spending, now you notice the, Upper dashboard has changed to 1.2. The lower dashboard shows the contract spending, which is 392.8, and all of the widgets below are showing contract spending. But for now, we're going to show total spending. So I'm going to go back to total. I'm going to let my page refresh. And then here we have our top five widgets. So we've got top five checks, top five vendors, top five contracts, spending by industry spending by funding source, 
top five expense categories, and top five responsibility centers. Responsibility centers are going to be a topic of conversation in this. So just early on, I'm going to give you the definition of responsibility center um, is a development or department where expenses will be budgeted. So in this case, it could be an office, a budgeting office, or it could be an actual housing development. And the housing development will be the name of that responsibility center. So I'm just going to scroll on up each widget while we show the top five results. If you hit the plus arrow, you will see the top 150 results. Just going to scroll down. And then if you click the details, you'll be taken to a narrow down faceted search. So let me click that and refresh the page. There we go. Let's take a minute for our page to download. It's uh, it's crossing a lot of information, so it takes a minute for the page to load. So now we're showing all spending by NYCHA for the fiscal year chosen. And um, if I come down here, maybe I want to narrow it down to a certain contract that I want to see. Or, and then once I've narrowed it down to that contract, maybe I want to choose a vendor. There's only one vendor for that contract, so that makes it easy. And then when I have all of my results, I can export them into a CSV or a Excel file. And let me just show you that really quickly. Okay. All of our data is um, exportable. So let's go back to spe total spending. Great. So now we're just going to check out NYCHA contracts. Come over here to the contracts area. I'll know my page is refreshed when the contracts area lights up blue. We have 15.1 billion in contracts this year. Um, PO contracts are purchase orders. BA contracts are blanket agreements and PAs are planned agreements. And we'll go into what these mean as we go on. So then we have our top 10 vendors by current amount, top 10 blanket agreements by current amount, and then we have our top 10 responsibility centers by current amount. So that's all the spending going to each of these responsibility centers, which is a development or a department. And then our widgets are top five blanket agreements. Top five blanket agreement modifications. So this shows where a contract started. And then it may have changed over time. The amount may have gone up. It may have gone down. It's rare that for them to go down, but it may have gone up. So this shows the percent difference in the contract from when it began to where it is presently. Then we have our top five planned agreements, top five planned agreement modifications, top five purchase orders, top five vendors. And you can see the number of contracts that each of the vendors has with NYCHA. Top five award methods. And you can see contracts awarded by each award method. Top five departments. And top five responsibility centers. Contracts by industry. And then contracts by size. So where NYCHA differs from the rest of New York is that we really wanted to get that lower level data so people really understood not only what was being purchased, but where it was going. So I'm going to show you an example of a blanket agreement. And just before we get into that, let me just explain what a blanket agreement is. A blanket agreement is a contract with specific um, item and unit prices, but no specific quantities or delivery points. Uh, they are set up with an effective date and an expiration date, and there's no accounting set up for a blanket agreement until a blanket re release has been um, created against the blanket agreement. So if you're familiar with the citywide um, finances, this is a lot like an MA1 contract that has a certain amount and then DO1s are spent against it. So I'm just going to show you, I pulled an example. So this is the logic within checkbook for a blanket agreement. We have a blanket agreement that where its overall amount is $245,000. And then that blanket 
agreement will have many, many releases. I isolated release 25 just for our purposes so that we could sort of hone in on it. Release 25 has an invoice price of $98.16. That release is broken into three lines. Lines aren't lines on an invoice or lines on a release. What they are literally are accounting lines. They point to some place on the expense budget for NYCHA that lets them know like, okay, this is an expenditure we have and it lines up with 18 or 20 in this, for, in, for instance, in this example. So line 18, we got some tools. We invoice for $19.40, line 20, $36, and then line 24, $42.75. Um, each line then went, had a distribution. So there's one distribution for all of these materials, and they went out in three different shipments. And in this case, they went to a department called Balance Sheet. So let's look at what that looks like in actuality in an Excel spreadsheet. So first we have our contract. So the contract number is BA1000126. At the, so the first line of your Excel spreadsheet will always be the agreement line. It'll give you how many releases are part of this agreement so far. It'll give you the start date and the end date which is really for NYCHA, the effective date and the end date. And then we get to see the overall amount of this agreement, which is $245,000. And what has been invoiced thus far, $195,094.63. But with all of these agreements, I am now, with, with this agreement, I am now just trying to isolate release 25. So I'm going to filter my spreadsheet. I'm gonna look for release 25 and isolate it out of all of these other releases. And now you can see that the line number matches what we had, um, line number 18. We can see it was a blade hole saw, Milwaukee general purpose. We could see that on this release, they ordered four. We can see the effective date. Also we call it the start date, the end date, when it was approved. We can see the, the align amount, what it was, what it costs for each of these. And then we can see what we, what was invoiced for it. So that's a lot of information. We can also see exactly what the invoice on that release amount was, it was 9816. And we can see who our vendor is, Fastenal, and what, per, what the purpose was for this. Now I'm gonna bring over our spending information. Hold on one second. Okay. So for this same release, if I were to pull down the spending information and let's start off, adjust my screen so you can see it. So we see that the checks were issued for this invoice in July of that year. We can see it was not going to section eight housing. It was a blanket agreement, a blanket agreement number, the release number, and mind you, I, I filtered this sheet. So when we first come to the spending for this blight, for this agreement, it looks like this. So again, I wanted to filter for the release, which was 25. And then we can see that there's they're pulling from line number one and line number two for this. I can see the entire check amount on each of these. So let me backtrack a little bit. A check can have more than one invoice. And an invoice can cover more than one um, contract. So when I look at this overall check amount, it does, we're just focusing in on this one release and what was released and where it was going. But the overall check has many contracts on it potentially, covering many invoices. So we can see that the amount spent adds up to what we saw on the contract side, 98.16. We have our vendor information, purpose, and then over here we have our responsibility center that it went to, which was in this case, a department balance sheet. Um, can I pause for any questions just at the moment at how we look at this NYCHA information within a, a spreadsheet? Because that is really the crux of the difference between citywide information and NYCHA information. It's how you see it because we go to a 
much deeper level on NYCHA in terms of exactly what was purchased and where it was going. Do I have any questions so far? Great. So I wanted to show both a blanket and planned agreement logic, and then I wanted to show um, a purchase order example. So a purchase order, we don't have this release. A purchase order is a type, um, it's the type of order you issue when you request a delivery of goods or specific uh, or services for specific dates and locations. You can order multiple items for each planned or standard purchase order. Each purchase order line can have multiple shipments and you can distribute each shipment across multiple accounts. So here we are using agreement PO100001 and the overall agreement amount is $1,916.26. We have three lines for this order, 763, then line two is for 390, and the last one is 763. And it went out in one distribution and we can see it's hardware for a shelf probably for shelving. Um, the quantity is also here on the distribution information. So we can also tell that whatever we're buying, we're buying it for a dollar per item because the quantity ordered was 763 and the amount that we are being invoiced is the same. And it went out in one shipment and it went to um, the responsibility center for maintenance repairs and skilled trades. So let's take a look at that underlying data. And you have three lines and they are all going to a certain distribution. It's one distribution going out and then they're going out in one shipment. It would look this way as well on the Excel spreadsheet. I'm not really sure. I may have put down the PO, and num the PO number um, incorrectly, which is why I'm not being able to pull out this specific example for you at the moment. Um, so now that I've explained that, I'm just gonna show you how to actually pull the data. I know that we just did a, a quick example, but I'm just gonna show you the three ways that we can look up information. So first we have smart search. Smart search is usually what I go to when I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking for. Maybe I know a vendor name. Um, maybe I know um, a contract number. So I'm just gonna start by putting in, start typing in information. So say I'm looking for emergency security and safety. I can start typing that word in, it auto fills, and then I can choose exactly what I am looking for. So I'd like to see expenses on safety and medical ex expenses for NYCHA. Just gonna click on that. Now you have all of the contracts, all of the spending and all of the budget information that deals with safety and medical expenses. And then I can choose which type of information I'd like to see and export it into an Excel spreadsheet. Smart Search is the only place you can come where you will get all of that information in one spot. You'll get your contract information, you'll get your spending information and budget information all in one place, and then be able to choose which information you really wanna look at the most. Um, advanced search is what I use when I have some pertinent information that I'm trying to find out. Um, and I know, I may know um, a vendor that uh, NYCHA is working with, I may know, a contract number, I may know um, any of that pertinent information. So in here's where um, advanced search can get a little tricky. Advanced search always opens in the citywide advanced search. So if you want NYCHA information, you have to just come over to this other government entities box, click on NYCHA, and then the advanced search will refresh just for NYCHA information. Maybe you just want information about a particular responsibility center. Maybe you want to know about, let's just choose one, Amsterdam. I can choose Amsterdam. I can choose fiscal year 2023 and click submit. If you know a date range, you can put a date range in. 
while it loads, Nicole, I have one question um, from a participant, if that's all right. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Um, could you remind us the definition of purchase order in comparison to the blanket and planned agreements? So a purchase order order is um, when you issue a request for a delivery of goods or services for specific dates or locations. Um, it's just a one-off, whereas a blanket agreement is an agreement, like a Staples account might be a blanket agreement where you have a certain amount you're going to spend with Staples for the year, and then you have certain budgeted items that you're allowed to choose from Staples, and you draw down against that account to uh, get releases from that money to send out those certain items. Does that make sense? It does. Blanket agreement seems more of like a conglomerate, right? It's more, it's, it's just a, more of a, an overall contract for goods in which you draw down from that contract. A PO is just a one-off of item purchase. And you can have, you can have several items that are being purchased for a specific use that sort of thing. So instead of having releases, you just have lines that are pointing to certain accounting lines. Got you. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, in the advanced search, we see we've got 98, 90, sorry, 96 spending results for Amsterdam. I can export my results into an Excel file. And there you can see, you can see what kind of type of, of uh, contract it is, whether it's from a purchase order, whether it's a blanket agreement, you'll see the contract number, you'll get the release number. So if you're trying to drill down on a specific release, you can do that. Uh, when you go to the um, spending area, you can use that information. It'll give you your invoice number. You can also search by your document ID. So if you know about a check that went out and you want to see all of the contracts that are involved in that check, all of um, the invoices, you can just search for, for it by the check number. Um, within this, you're going to see what the amount was on the check, what was spent, who the vendor was, the purpose of the contract, which is an important field in terms of understanding what's being the money's being spent on, um, the funding source, where the funding came for from, where it went, it went to the Amsterdam development, and what the individual expense categories were for the expenditures. And then if you have a um, result and it ends up being over 200,000 lines of results, we can't do that in advanced search. Um, it's just too big. So that's when I wanna come up to this top line here, right in the middle, data feeds. I'm gonna click on data feeds. I'm gonna choose what format I would like my um, file to come in. I'm gonna click next. And again, here, I'm gonna choose New York City Housing Authority. And then again, let's just say, it, Albany was going to have over 200,000 spending results. It's probably not, but maybe for all years. And then down here, I can even choose exactly which columns I would like to see in my file. I'm going to add them all. And then I would click submit. If this is a million rows of data, it there I'm going to be prompted to put in my email address. Once I put in my email address, the work is going on behind the scenes. Once the files are ready for you, you'll get an email with a tracking number. You're gonna place the tracking number right here and hit go, and then all of your files will download. Um, so that is a, an overview of NYCHA. Um, I would like to take any questions that anyone might have at this time. No questions. Nicole, um, why don't you show uh, these where we, they can look up the definitions? Site oh, yes, that's a great idea. So um, I don't expect you all to remember all of this from this session. So if you are trying to remember what the different contracts are, etc., you can just click over here on NYCHA under the glossary of terms. And we have all of the NYCHA accounting terms. 
and the types of contracts, all the information that you could need. And again, and if you don't find what you need here, you are welcome to reach out to me and I would more than happy to help. All right, we do have one question. Um, is a line number similar to object or budget code? Um, I can tell you that exactly. A line number is an identified amount allocated for a specific purpose in the expense budget, supporting schedules for each budget code within a unit of appropriation. It's in our glossary as well, um, but it, it points to a specific budget expense. Anybody else? Um, right now, I do not see any other questions, Nicole. Oh, here we go. Here's one. For planned and purchase orders, is there a per unit cost? Hmm. Um, so a planned purchase order is a long-term agreement committing to buying goods or services costing in excess of $50,000 from a single source. Um, I don't believe purchase orders have the same restrictions. Um, they meant a unit price. Is there a unit price? Oh. For unit price? Not that I'm aware of. No, Cole, can you scroll down a little bit on the uh, Sorry. screen? There you go. Any other questions? Okay. Hi, Nicole. If a NYCHA resident is broadly curious about digging into the finances and their specific development, where do you recommend it? Where do you recommend they start? Okay. So um, I would go to advanced search. I would go to spending. So let's pull it up. I would go to NYCHA spending, and then I would look for the name of your development. Um, if you live in the Baychester, or the Baruch houses, for instance, um, or you live in Baychester, I would start by using the name of your housing development and search for that within the responsibility centers, and I would download that spending information. And then you can start to see where the money is organized to go to. And it doesn't mean that's all of the money is probably that that like that's just a that's just a development a responsibility center. There are, are broader departments that may be delivering goods to a responsibility center or that may deliver goods to a development um, yeah. where the responsibility center is not that development. If that makes sense, so it'll have most of the cost for your development, but not maybe every cost for your development. All right, what happens when NYCHA hires a contractor and then contractor hires subcontractor? So we don't have subcontractors for NYCHA and checkbook. We would love to have that information, but we just don't have that yet. Um, maybe in a further uh, advancement of the NYCHA app, we will be able to do that. Right now, we're just showing the prime vendors. Is uh, another question, is there any variables that we can use to look at types of procurement processes used, design, build, et cetera? I'm not aware. Um, let me, I would look at that as it's probably an expense category issue um, for design, build. It may be that they're breaking out that sort of thing into a much lower category here, uh, into its individual parts of what parts of design and build. Um, I'm not, I would have to do a little more research for you and get back to you. And if you leave your email in the um, chat, I will, I'll do some, some additional research to see what I can find. Cause we've got like equipment we've got, I'm just not, I'm not positive, but I, I, I can do some deep digging. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't, like in, in New York City, we have these various award methods that we use, right? We have contract types, we have award methods, um, like RFPs and things like that. I'm, I don't remember seeing so much of that in in uh, NYCHA. We have funding sources, but it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, little bit it's not the same. Um, there's another question here, but you know, um, we're probably not going to be able to answer it, but I will read the question so everybody can hear it. Um, subcontractors, even management companies do not return phone calls, have dummy offices, aren't paying their taxes, are embezzling wages. What can I do to research them or report them? Half of the people taking money from New York City 
isn't on any website or has no information, what can I do? Um, is there, I don't know if we have, is there anybody from the controls office from our NYCHA group that's part of this conversation today? All right, what I could do here is um, if you provide us, you know, Nicole is going to put her email address out there for you. So what you can do then is drop this, send her an email asking your question, and then we'll forward it to the uh, to a public affairs policy group. Because I'm not, you no, know, we don't have that kind of information to provide you guys. I mean, if the if the people, if it's not listed and the vendors are not here, the best you can do is look at look at the, the building itself, the responsibility center. Try to find out the type of work that they're doing. Okay, I could kind of reverse engineer it. If you know they're replacing, okay, I reached I reached your office. I honestly get zero help. Um, maybe maybe an idea, Nicole. Tell me if if, if I'm crazy. It was just if they know the particular responsibility center and the work that's being done, maybe they can go back and kind of link it back to a contract in the prime vendor. And then Correct. Actually, and and if you look at it through the contracts, you will find the details of exactly what work is being done, what was purchased, and where it was going. That would be um, that would be the first way I would attack trying to figure that out. It is hard, especially on the construction, because construction um, contracts usually do have a lot of sub vendors, and unfortunately, we just don't have that information. Yeah. Sorry, I wish I could be. We could be more helpful, but yeah, I, mean, that's, I apologize. That's, yeah, that's as far as we can go as far as digging in. Are we still writing questions, Ed? Uh, nothing that we could. I mean, nothing that we could actually. Again, all this information uh, from the iPhone, I think, is what it's is is. I mean, if you want to put all those questions together, we can just forward it to the the, the proper people again in our office just to. Let them know that this is a concern and really somebody should be looking into this for you guys. Okay. All right. Um, okay, wait, hold on. Okay, there's a note here. Hi. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself earlier. I'm on the policy team, but this sounds like it may have gone through the community action center. So and Tearson seems like the best person to reach out for this issue. Okay. Yep. All right, so again, if uh, Jonathan, you want to, if, if Jonathan, we can forward it to Interson at the Community Action Center, and this can kind of first check everything, if that's okay. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Really appreciate your interest in Checkbook and NYCHA. Um, I put my email into the chat. If you have any individual questions or if you're digging down on information and you're having a tough time, uh, with a specific search, I am more than happy to dig in with you and help. So um, please use my email. And thank you so much for coming today.